Hello everyone. Welcome to the course on Practical Machine Learning with Python. This course was created by the Stanford Crowd Course Initiative. By the end of this module, we will have covered the following topics. The need for parameter tuning of machine learning models, parameter tuning as an optimization problem, and three types of searches, grid, random, and smart. Grid search and manual search are the most widely used strategies for hyperparameter optimization. The literature about this issue shows empirically and theoretically that randomly chosen trials are more efficient for hyperparameter optimization than trials on a grid. Empirical evidence comes from a comparison with a large previous study that used grid search and manual search to configure neural networks and deep belief networks. Compared with neural networks configured by a pure grid search, it can be found that random search over the same domain is able to find models that are as good or better within a small fraction of the computation time. Granting random search the same computational budget, random search finds better models by effectively searching a larger, less promising configuration space. This two-part optimization problem is similar in many ways to stepwise regression. It is not clear if there is an analytic way to solve this problem more abstractly. Instead of an analytic approach, there are ways to find better approximations to lambda star using less computer time. Hyperparameter settings could have a big impact on the prediction accuracy of the trained model. Optimal hyperparameter settings often differ for different datasets, therefore they should be tuned for each dataset. Since the training process doesn't set the hyperparameters, there needs to be a metaprocess that tunes them. This is what we mean by hyperparameter tuning. Hyperparameter tuning is a meta-optimization task. As the figure in the two slides show, each trial of a particular hyperparameter setting involves training a model, an inner optimization process. The outcome of hyperparameter tuning is the best hyperparameter setting, and the outcome of model training is the best model parameter setting. For each proposed hyperparameter setting, the inner model training process comes up with a model for the dataset and outputs evaluation results on holdout or cross-validation datasets. After evaluating a number of hyperparameter settings, the hyperparameter tuner outputs the setting that yields the best performing model. The last step is to train and validate a new model on the entire dataset under the best hyperparameter setting. Here is the pseudocode. The training and validation step can be conceptually replaced with a cross-validation step. Conceptually, hyperparameter tuning is an optimization task, like model training. However, these two tasks are quite different in practice. When training a model, the quality of a proposed set of model parameters can be written as a mathematical formula, usually called the loss function. When tuning hyperparameters, however, the quality of those hyperparameters cannot be written down in a closed form formula because it depends on the outcome of a black box model training process. This is why hyperparameter tuning is much harder. Up until a few years ago, the only available methods were grid search and random search. In the last few years, there's been increasing interest in auto-tuning. Grid search, true to its name, picks out a grid of hyperparameter values, evaluates every one of them, and returns the winner. For example, if the hyperparameter is the number of leaves in a decision tree, then the grid could be 10, 20, 30, a uh, hundred. For regularization parameters, it's common to use exponential scale. 1 e to the minus 5, 1 e to the minus 4, 1 e to the minus 3, and so forth down, down to 1. Come up with the minimum and maximum values often requires some guesswork. 
So sometimes people run a small grid, see if the optimum lies at either endpoint, and then expand the grid in that direction. This is called a manual grid search. Grid search is, a dead, is dead simple to set up and easy to parallelize. It is the most expensive method in terms of total computation time. However, if run in parallel, it is fast in terms of wall clock time. Since a random search approach seems like it might be worse than a grid search, it's worth pondering why a random search should work. It's possible to argue that most machine learning models have low effective dimension, which means that a small number of parameters really affect the cost function and most have almost no effect. Random search lets you explore a greater variety of settings for each parameter, which allows you to find better values for the few parameters that really matter. Random search is a slight variation on grid search. Instead of searching over the entire grid, random search only evaluates a random sample of points on the grid. This makes random search a lot cheaper than grid search. Here is a probabilistic explanation of random search. Imagine a 5% interval around the true maximum. We sample points from this space and see if any of it lands within the maximum. Each random draw has a 5% chance of landing in that interval. If we draw n points independently, then the probability that all of them miss the desired interval is 1 minus 0.05 raised to the n. So the probability that at least one of them succeeds in hitting the interval is 1 minus that quantity. We want at least a 95 probability of success. To figure out the number of draws we need, just solve for n in the equation on the slide. If the close to optimal region of hyperparameters occupies at least 5% of the grid surface, then random search with 60 trials will find that region with high probability. Smart search algorithms require computational time to figure out where to place the next set of samples. Some algorithms require much more time than others. Hence, it only makes sense if the evaluation procedure, the inner optimization box, takes much longer than the process of evaluating where to sample next. Smart search algorithms also contain parameters of their own that need to be tuned, hyper, hyperparameters. Sometimes tuning the hyper-hyperparameters is crucial to make it faster than random search. Recall that hyperparameter tuning is difficult because we cannot write down the actual mathematical formula for the function we're optimizing. The technical term for the function that is being optimized is response surface. Consequently, we don't have the der derivation of that function, and therefore most of the mathematical op optimization tools that we know and love, such as Newton method or SGD, cannot be applied. And that concludes our video. This course was created as a part of the Stanford Crowd Course Initiative, the world's first massive online open coursework developed entirely by an online community. If you'd like to learn more about us or view more courses, visit crowdcourse.stanford.edu.